Hi everyone, welcome to Angular Material Component Harnesses. My name is Annie Wang and I'm on the Angular team at Google and more specifically the Angular Components team. And I'm here to tell you about component harnesses and how they can make your tests less brittle. So what exactly are component harnesses? Well, it's exactly as it seems. You put a harness on your component as such. Anyways, in all seriousness, Component Harnesses is an API for interacting with components in tests like a user would, and that involves clicking, typing, or general perceiving. I'm just like looking at the disabled state, but we're not checking any like DOM structure or internal states. And this works in both unit and end-to-end -end tests. So why do we wanna use Component Harnesses? So this is what selecting an option in a dropdown would look like in a typical unit test. Um, first, you would get the trigger of your select through query selector by a class name perhaps, then you would click on the trigger, and then you'll find the option you're looking for maybe also through query selector, and then you'll click on that option. So the problem here is that this part of the test is very brittle. So what happens if you change your class name um, you'll have to go in and change the selector for all your tests. And this is especially troublesome if you're using components managed by other people, perhaps like a component library. This makes it difficult for maintainers to optimize and make improvements to the components that require internal DOM changes, not just simple class name changes. It is also worth noting that if the component changes to do something async, the click will also break. Um, you would have to add something like fixture.wenStable, for example. So this is what the test would look like if we're using component harnesses. So we would get the harness through the loader and then we can select the option through a click option method that you can filter your options through perhaps text, something more visible instead of a class name. So right off the bat, it's a lot easier to read. We're not dealing with specific selectors or class names and they can abstract away you know, common interaction steps like opening a trigger, selecting an option. Most importantly, we're not interacting with a DOM. So if any changes happen internally for an optimization, it won't affect people's tests. Angular material components each have their own harness, but we also recommend creating your own for your custom components. And here's how you would do that. Let's say you have a option list component. And the first thing you would do is extend the CDK component harness. Then you will need a way to locate your component in your test, and you can do that through the host selector. In this case, it would be something like my option list. And methods and harnesses should be async and return a promise. In this case, let's say we want to click on your our option list, and the method would look like this. First, it would be async, click, and since click doesn't return any results, it will be promise void. Um, and in the method, we'll just click on the host. So note that we're not interacting with the real DOM element because this wouldn't work across different platforms. Um, so not only can we interact with the host component, we can also get harnesses of subcomponents. In this example, let's say we want to get the options of your option list. Um, then we would use the locator for all method to locate all the instances of option harnesses under your option list. Locator for all is similar to query selector all, except that we're not interacting with the DOM. We're actually looking for instances of component harnesses, because once again, if we're interacting with the DOM, it's not going to work across different platforms. Another cool feature of component harnesses is that we can get attributes of multiple harnesses at the same time with parallel instead of awaiting for each one in series. Let's say you want to get the labels of each option now. Um, first, you would call the get options method from the previous slide, and then you would use parallel to call option.getLabel on each option instead of awaiting for each one. 
And what this does is it consolidates change detection. So it runs once before and once after the block of code and the parallel callback. Um, this can make your test a lot more efficient and clean. So that was an overview of component harnesses. If you'd like to learn more about testing with harnesses or creating your own harnesses, we have more in-depth guides here. Component harnesses work across multiple different environments, and currently it works for testbed with unit test and protractor and web driver for end-to-end -end tests. And just wanted to give a quick shout out to the great community work that's been going on for the Cypress integration of component harnesses. Thank you.